And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at two expansions for Battle Lord 2.0. We have the Warband of Scorn, this is for the bad guys. And then we have the Hernfar Guardians, the good guys. Two of these packs, they both come with a lot of miniatures. I mean, a lot of miniatures, a lot of stuff. Well, you know what, you're going to see it all in a second. Here it is. First, let's take a look at the units. Both sets come with some of the basic units, the Blood Harvesters and the Citadel Guards. You can use like piles of those now if you want to. But let's take a look here. First, we have the Doombringer. Now, this guy here looks like a giant dung beetle, I guess, but he has spikes all over him. He's useful because he has a chance to do extra damage with his special ability. Just if the, if the target unit's infantry or cavalry, well, that's like half the units in the game. Anyone who's next to him can't move but what I really like about him is the fact that he ignores movement restrictions of the hexes that he moves into. So he can move really quickly, get around things, basically very thematic to burrow through. Now the good guy version here, which is probably the coolest model in the game, actually with several pieces that, I mean, is simply snap them together. But we have here the Siege Golem. Now the Siege Golem, look at that thing, it's tough, okay? Has six health. And it does four damage, and it has a ranged attack that does this. So a two to, two to six range. That's amazing. But he also can do damage adjacent to him while he's attacking, and he can ignore one retreat from combat. This is a really powerful, cool character. The problem is, is it's ranged, and it's not so highly maneuverable. If it moves, it can't attack. So it's like having a giant artillery unit on your side of the board, but it's certainly one that you will consider. We then have, also for the good guys, we have some mages, the Greyhaven Battle Mages. Now the best thing about these guys, other than the fact that they can draw cards um, whenever they get lore, is that they have these shield tokens, rune shields, that they can place on an enemy unit. When a unit has a shield token with it and they take a hit, they get rid of the shield token first. So basically it gives you an extra wound. You can't put multiples of these on people, but still very useful, very good taking these guys. Their counterpart, are the grotesque. These guys here who, well, they look incredibly grotesque. And they have Lacerate, which lets you bleed the target unit. When you put bleed on somebody, it actually makes them roll one fewer die. Now they can spend two lore to get rid of that bleed token, but it's kind of annoying. I also like these guys because they have an arranged attack, basically, from one to two. But they can't move if they use it. So I don't know what they're doing, shooting bones out of their bodies. Pretty gross, but also pretty cool. This unit I do not like, not because they're not good, they're very good, but because they rip me up all the time. And here we have some nice cavalry, the, the knights here, the citadel lancers. The guy, if, if they, you, you know, avoid retreating, they will still damage you. And if they were not adjacent to the target unit, they cause one damage when they hit. It's crazy, very useful, and also some really cool models here. Uh, on the bad guy side, we have the Berserkers. These are like a bunch of little dudes here. They look like smaller versions of the Grotesque. And that's good because they cause a lot of damage when they... They can cause damage to units around them. So they're kind of like a wild card. But they're very cheap to throw out there. But they only have rolled two dice. But one of those dice is an automatic reroll, Which is something I like. Then finally for the good guys, we have the Ironbound. Who are, I think, golems. Or the automatons or... Uh, robots or what have you and you can always spend one lore to order this unit no matter where it is and they can go an extra hex which is really cool I mean having these guys in the board your opponents always worried these guys can just keep coming and coming and coming and they can ignore one of the weaker hits basically with their armor um, they roll four dice a very strong powerful unit then we got a we got the sisters of battle they're not the sisters of battle they're the blood sisters I'm um, just joshing you. These guys are mean and nasty, where if they hit the opponent, they can hopefully 
suck some of that health back to them. And they can also cause the bleeding. And they can bleed a non-friendly, uh, they can pick a non-bleeding friendly unit. So they can pick someone around you, give bleed to one of your own guys, and then do damage to someone else. Which is kind of crazy, but if you mix them with, let's say, the, uh, the uh, obscene guys, hey, why not give these guys some of that? They don't care. They're big. They're tough. They can handle it just to cause a damage to, I don't know. Let's, kill, let's take out one of these guys. That makes life a lot better. Each expansion comes with a new lore deck, too. Now, these lore decks are not shuffled in with the other ones. They replace them. However, at the beginning of each game, you pick which lore deck you're going to use. Then you can shuffle in other lore cards as long as they're from the same faction, up to five of them. So it kind of lets you, you know, build your lore deck too, but you can't customize it too much. And you're not allowed to have more than two of the same card. Some really cool new cards here. You can see this one here lets you heal someone who's near one of your caster units. This one here, uh, you can basically, all enemy melee units roll one fewer die. So when they, someone, they do a big attack, here's your chance to take them out. Defend the realm, you kill somebody. If you, if you eliminate someone while on your half, you get a victory point. Parry here, you choose any number of your opponent's dice, make them re-roll the dice, yes. Here's a big one, scatter. Basically, you hit one and everybody has to move away from that hex. Portal. Really nasty for the good guys. They can put a portal down and move someone across the board very quickly. Uh, this is a useful card to know that your opponent has. So, <laughs> because you need to be able to defend against that portal. They also have stalwart defenders where you can make people ignore damage. Over here you add three dice to your combat roll. And you can, uh, each of those single swords that you produce can be committed to cause an extra damage. That's crazy powerful, but I mean, it does seem like the bad guys. You got a double strike. Or here, you can order two extra units other than the ones that you're normally doing and then play an extra card. So this lets you do a gigantic attack on the opponent. Or the Machinations of War, where you can move an Ironbound unit. You'll find that there's a lot of uh, cards in the game that, that are specific to different units. Mana Break, this one's a really powerful one, which basically cancels your opponent's card they played or they skip their victory point step and discard their, um, and, and immediately take two damage to one of their units. Which one will they do? It can be tough. Here's a spotter. He, can, he helps the siege golem ignore um, blocking terrain. Bone spurs. Basically, you hit the person who's attacking you. <laughs> Very fun. So, lots of different cards that are included. Um, and you have these two new lore sets that you can mix and match, pick which one you want to use. And then finally, there's some more scenario cards. I, you know, each scenario cards for the different sides so that there's lots of different new scenarios that can be built. And there's some new terrain. You can actually pay for these pieces of terrain when you're setting up. There's three types of terrain here. There's the crystal spires. And if a friendly unit's there at the beginning of your turn, they get plus one to all their combat rolls. So when you put this out, you're going to put this in that spot where that is. The blood field basically allows you to heal your units. I don't want to know why or how. And the barricade, basically, you can put this somewhere. When someone moves into this hex, they have to stop moving or take a damage. So these aren't very expensive, but you might want to add a little bit of terrain to your side of the field. Um, and so you're able to buy these and put these out during a deployment step. Now, both these expansions come with uh, some rules, but I mean, really, they're not difficult to do. They're, they're very easy to assimilate. You just add everything together. The only thing you have to keep separate are the lore decks. So you just have two different lore decks to pick from now. Um, but there, there's basically four more units and then some more of, of the original one, which gives you, I think, eight different units to pick from now. And that's really just neat. I, I really like this game the way that you can, the, the deployment cards is a, it's just a really cool setup. This game is phenomenally great, okay? If I'm not clear, let, let me be clear. Battle Lore is my favorite two-player combat game, period. And this cements that. Wow, why would I ever want to play Warhammer or any of these other miniatures games, you know, with all this measuring and army building when I have the exact same thing here in a box, it's, oh, there's so many options now, and I'm, and I'm sure they're gonna be adding more. There's, there's even monsters and different things that you can add, um, but I haven't even tried out that. Just with this alone, I'm so happy. 
to sit there and set up my army up and go, what units am I going to add? And the combat is clean and fast. There's no power creep here. These new units are awesome, but the old units are also awesome. So you're going to sit there and try to mix and match and make a cool army. And you can do this in minutes, minutes. So like the new Lord decks, again, not seeing power creep. So I can be like, hmm, I love this card, but I love that one. If there's some cards in one Lord deck that you really like, hey, mix and match them in the old deck, five cards. And again, that's five cards, but it doesn't take a ton of time to set up and do. Ah, uh, wow, the new terrain is cool. Uh, you really get a lot of miniatures here. Uh, folks, I'm sure there's gonna be 7,000 billion expansions that come for Battle Lore. But if they stopped here, you know, I was happy with the original game, but if they stopped here, this would be fine by me. There is so much in this box. I do like Memoir 44 and Commands and Colors Ancients and the other games that Richard Bork has designed, but this to me is the absolute best. Every time I play this game, win or lose, I'm thrilled. It's so quick. I love how all the abilities are listed on the cards, the new abilities, the shielding, the bleeding. They're really easy to put in. You understand what they do. They're very simple. They're back and forth. You sit there and go, ooh, do I want two of these legendary units in the battle? I don't know if that's worth it. You know, which one do I want? Do I want the Siege Golem or the Griffin? And wow, so many options. The miniatures are great. Well, I mean, I might want to wash some of these miniatures because especially with the, um, I keep forgetting the name of this army, the Warband of Scorn, they can look a little similar at times. But still, I love this game, folks, and this expansion is more stuff, but they're not skipping on you. There's a lot more stuff in here, and you are going to have so much fun building your army. Why are you even listening to me? Go get this. I predict Battle Lore is going to be looked at at the end of this year and a few years as the best in the light war game genre. Fantasy or not, fantastic game, and it's amazing. Dice Tower Judgment into my collection. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.